Hello, and welcome to the first lecture of Chapter 2. And in this chapter, we're going to be talking about macroeconomic data. Now, this isn't the most exciting of all the chapters um, in this course, but it's probably one of the more important. Because as in any science, we must be able to measure the phenomenon we want to study. And this chapter is all about how we make those measurements. So in this lecture, I'm going to give you a brief overview of the chapter, and then we're going to do a, a bit of a review of gross domestic product, which is one of the most basic measurements that we make of the economy. First off, I'd like to give a brief overview of um, our coverage of this chapter. All right, we're going to break this into six separate lectures. In the first lecture, which is this one, we'll give a brief overview, which we're doing, and we'll talk a little bit about GDP, which is the most basic measure we're going to talk about. Um, next, we're going to talk in, in lectures two and three about a couple of the components of GDP, namely consumption and investment. And in lecture two, we'll talk a little bit about consumption, and we'll go into a little more detail of the consumption function uh, that, than what is actually covered in, within this chapter. Then in lecture three, we'll talk about investment, and we'll go into a little more detail about the investment function than what's in the chapter. In lecture four, we'll, di we'll di um, differentiate between real and nominal variables. Then in lecture five, we'll talk further about the chain weighted versus a fixed weighted index numbers. So we'll talk about index numbers, and we're going to go into a bit more detail than what the chapter does. Then finally, in chapter six, we'll go through um, an example using an Excel spreadsheet of calculating a chain weighted index number in a way very similar to that in which chain-weighted real GDP is actually calculated. Next, we're going to talk a little bit about gross domestic product. Now, what gross domestic product is, as you will remember from principles of macroeconomics, it's the market value of all final goods and services produced within an economy during a given period. The idea behind gross domestic product is that we're trying to measure the overall output of the economy. All right, and to do that, we really have two different me definitions or two different angles of finding this measurement. The first angle we're going to talk about, we're going to call that the expenditure method. All right, total expenditure on domestically produced final goods and services in a given period. All right, so basically this is price times quantity, and we add them all up for final goods and services, and we know this is how much we spend on each one of these. The next one is total income method. All right, or the total income earned by domestically located factors of production in a given period. Now, these two definitions turn out to be equivalent. All right, they'll give us the same number. At least in theory, they'll give us the same number. And the reason for that is if I spend a dollar, I spend one dollar, what does that mean? That means somebody else out there had to receive that dollar. So for every dollar I spend, there's someone else who that dollar becomes their income. So expenditure has to equal on total income. All right, so total expenditure will equal total income. All right, so let's let's break this down. We'll look at the expenditure components. All right, we have consumers, so households have spending, and so we call that consumption. We have businesses have spending, we call that investment. Now here's an important point. I know we, this was covered in principles of macroeconomics, but we need to remember this here too. Investment is not the same thing as what most people mean when they say investment. When an economist says investment, what they mean is this. Businesses buying stuff they use to make other stuff. All right, so I'm currently recording this lecture on a computer. Um, I'm using a iPad and my computer to make this presentation. Both of those things are things I have bought in order to produce this lecture. So they could be in a sense called investment. All right? And that's the business, if you want to call the business me, right? Uh, you know, we start getting dodgy whether or not it's business or not, public, private. We're not going to go there, right? Okay, what the issue is, is that um, a firm, so to speak, the professor here who's producing stuff, a factor of production, has bought tools in order to make a lecture. And we call that investment. We do not call investment, um, for example, buying shares of stock in a company. That's not what we're talking about here. 
That's kind of the vernacular use of the word investment, but we don't use it that way in economics. Next, we have government spending. So the government spends money, so that's a part of expenditure. And finally, the foreign sector. So people outside of our country buy stuff of ours. And we call that net exports. So we take um, imports minus export, or I'm sorry, exports, and then we subtract off our imports. And the reason why we subtract off imports is because that would lead to double counting if we didn't. Again, um, that would have been covered in principles of macroeconomics. So we have this overall very important identity. On one hand, total expenditure, okay? This is expenditure. All right? That has to equal total income. So this is something that's important to note. From that identity, well, you're going to get a little bit of confusion in how I talk about things. Because I'll talk about this variable y. And sometimes I'll mean income. Sometimes I'll mean expenditure. Sometimes I'll mean output. All right? And well, here's the thing. These guys, by national income accounting identity, are all equal to one another. All right? And there's a few reasons why, and we can go into this. And if you read the textbook, there's, there's a little more information in there about, well, what if I um, produce something this year but don't sell it till next year? How does income equal expenditure? How does that equal total output? Well, we have some tricks that we do to take care of that. But overall, um, we're going to basically assume this income accounting identity for the rest of the class. And that concludes lecture one of chapter two.